I find the toughest thing about preparation still, uh, with all of my experience, is to make sure that um, I'm well enough prepared early enough. So I have to really slap myself around a few weeks before a concert and say, David, you know what you have to do and don't leave it till later. So procrastination is also um, my problem at times. But if I give myself heaps of time, these days I can be pretty confident with most of the music that I play that I will get it well prepared uh, by the time the concert comes. I like to read a bit and do some listening, but I find it very useful when I'm playing not to think much at all. So I try not to feel overfill my head with good ideas about how the piece should sound, but rather leave lots of space for, well, emptiness. It's hard to describe uh, the state of um, emptiness or uh, empty-headedness. Mindfulness, some would say, I suppose, where, where the sound is the whole experience, or I should probably admit that not only the sound, but um, a rich flow of emotional response can be along with the sound. It's one of the best ways that I've ever experienced being that can happen quite often on stage like that. In the rehearsal process, uh, we play it through and make gentle suggestions to each other, and, uh, but it's, it's been a very easy process. We're pretty much on the same wavelength with this piece and I think with good chamber music either you are working together every day and and you're sort of rehearsing to within an inch of and within an inch of your life and everything's planned out uh, or it's a little bit like going on a new journey every time you play it and I think I think we're we're in that latter category um, we, d we don't work together every day but uh, we're, we're all open to uh, the inspiration of the moment really in performance. One of the interesting points of interpretation uh, in the, the fantasy on themes from Rigoletto is are we playing a piece of opera? Are we playing a clarinet showpiece? Um, and when, the, when themes from the opera are quoted that are arias, um, there are choices as to, you know, I've said to Alan in rehearsals, oh, in the aria there, there's a comma there and he repeats the same word. So that's a logical place to take a breath for a singer, um, and so we, there's, there's been a little bit of experimentation there because it's on the score, you wouldn't say from the score, oh, that's the, where the clarinetist would breathe. They wouldn't normally dream of breathing there, but knowing the, the opera and the, and, and the text of the opera, you say, oh, well, that's, that's where Pavarotti breathes in, in that particular production. In terms of coming back to traditional standard repertoire and where we look at maybe rethinking how we've performed this in the past, I do tend to read a lot. I tend to listen to historically informed performances. Uh, there are a lot of, I play a modern clarinet. I do not play an 18th century clarinet. However, there are a lot of people who do specialize in this and I find that informs my performance incredibly when I, when I hear this and I can apply it to my, own, to my own instrument. Premier's new commissions, new compositions are really interesting. The whole process of developing a new piece is a fascinating journey in a way. It is sometimes fabulous to discuss things with the composer. A lot of the time it's also not. It's very rewarding to come at the interpretation yourself, to get it to almost performance to what you believe the performance should be, and then play it through for the composer, then discuss it with the composer. Most composers like to have some input, but hopefully one is of one mind with the composer and you're already almost there. I had a commission from a composer who shall be unnamed and it was for a wind quintet a long, long time ago. And the composer was there. Our oboist said uh, that the composer had written something that was unplayable in, on the instrument. The composer said he hadn't. The oboist got up and thumped the composer. This is the only time in my life I've ever seen anything like that happen, come to blows in a, in a rehearsal situation. Uh, I've had wonderful dealings with, with composers. Really, it, it, at its best, it's, a, it's, a, it's an incredibly rich relationship because you're both involved in creating something that didn't exist before, something that, that is just magic.